Monday, September 12, 2011. This is Mercedes Diesel Guy, and this is my 1991 Volkswagen Vanagon. If you've been following my progress, you know that I've actually been uh, working on the van for pretty much the whole summer. I um, took care of some oil leaks, which were pretty bad actually, and it looks like I fixed it, as well as a lot of body work. So, last weekend, I took the van out on more or less its first uh, its first test drive uh, its first real test drive all summer and it ran kinda rough but then smoothed out a bit did 30 miles last weekend and yesterday I actually had to um, drive it a bit further uh, because the uh, I was doing some work on the Subaru and I had to interrupt that so I couldn't take it so last night I took the van on a, on a round trip of uh, probably around 120 miles on the uh, and I had a couple of symptoms uh, that I'd like to note and I don't think they're related I mean uh, and I'll explain why uh, but I'm going to tell you about them in reverse order. So, on the, uh, on the way back, uh, probably about halfway through the trip, so about 30 miles into the return trip, I was on the highway, and the uh, oil pressure light started flashing and buzzing. Now, the oil pressure light, uh, of course is governed by the uh, two oil pressure switches. There's one underneath the uh, driver's side uh, uh, push rod tube cover on the engine here and that's the low pressure switch, I think 0.3 bar. The uh, high pressure switch, uh, 0.9 bar, is actually located kind of below the water pump. I'm sort of aiming at it right here. Let me see if I can just if there's any chance I can focus on it. So, yeah, you can sort of uh, see the connector straight down there. Uh, it's hard to make out the color of the wire because I have this on uh, night shot right now because uh, it's dark out here. It's uh, early September and getting it's getting darker significantly earlier. So, uh, this switch right down here, like I said, where you see that wire and that connector, kind of below this uh, metal tube and behind the belts and the water pump pulley. That, uh, that is the high pressure switch and basically if the if the engine has low oil pressure below I think around 2000 RPM uh, the low pressure switch uh, kicks on and uh, I believe the oil pressure light will simply come on on the dash. So, however, if you're over 2,000 RPM, the high pressure switch, uh, and if you're over 2,000 RPM and uh, you lose oil pressure, the high pressure pressure switch kicks on, and then the oil light will blink and you'll get a loud buzzer. And that's what happened to me on the highway last night around 10 o'clock. So, I pulled over and. Uh, there wasn't much I could do there on the side of the highway. I popped the engine cover. I I looked here at the um, at the wire going to the sender, and it was still attached. And and like I said, this uh, switch, both the oil pressure switches are new. And new when I say new, I mean there's less than 200 miles on them. It's part of what I did this summer. Uh, the major oil leak was at the high pressure sensor, so I put a new one in. So, uh, not knowing what else to do. I mean, I knew I could call AAA, but uh, I started the van up again, and uh, I revved it a bit, and the oil pressure light behaved itself. So, I uh, drove all the way back here to Worcester, about another you know 30... 35 miles-ish, and as I'm exiting the highway onto the uh, off-ramp, the oil pressure light starts uh, uh, going crazy again. 
Of course, this time, I think to actually uh, shift into neutral, I gave it some gas, brought the RPMs up, and the light went back out. So, uh, I'm faced with basically two possibilities here. Uh, one, uh, uh, one is an electrical problem, which means either the uh, switch, the, the new switch there uh, is faulty, uh, which is entirely possible, and I ordered a brand new one today. Or um, possibly this wire right here. Now, the reason I specifically suspect this wire is if, let me see if I can find the, uh... okay, if you, Let's just see if this is, yeah, if you look right there, you'll see this wire has been patched. And what happened was, um, it's called it five, six years ago, somewhere around there. Uh, the oil, the oil pressured light uh, came on, and I got the buzzer. And of course, you know, I thought, oh, my engine's dead. But I, I did a little poking around, and I very quickly found that this wire here had uh, had basically burned itself. So I um, so I did a patch job there, and I think I actually put in a. Uh, or was it the low pressure wire? I think it might have been the low pressure wire. Well, regardless, I put in a new uh, section of wire and... or did I just patch it together? Whatever I did, I repaired it and the... Uh, and that wire's been just fine since. Sorry, I got distracted by that uh, tapping there next door. So. Uh, so I'm actually going to run a uh, new length of wire to the high pressure sensor, and I've actually, uh, like I said, I've also ordered a new high pressure sensor. I'm hoping that's it, but um, people have also told me, uh, you know, Vanagon people have said for a long time, uh, you know, you need the correct German oil filter, and let's see if I can focus down here. Well, you can't see much of anything, but uh, uh, for the past eight years, I've been running nothing but the Fram PH2870A filter, and I've never had a problem with it. And a lot of people never have a problem with it, but uh, it's. Uh, but there's also a lot of uh, reports that uh, this filter there can cause a restriction, which does cause symptoms, like I described. So. It's possible that I just kind of got away with it for years, and right now I'm having trouble with this filter. Once again, this filter, less than 200 miles old, did it at the same time with the um, with the oil pressure sensors. So I'm actually, I, along with the new sensor, I ordered uh, some correct uh, German filters. It was either Man or Molly. I'm not sure which one, but I'm going to replace that. So. Like I said, it's either an electrical problem or a mechanical problem. Hopefully, if it's a mechanical problem, it's just the fuel filter. And if uh, if none of this works, and uh, the new filter, uh, the sensor, the wire, and the new filter don't work, then there's uh, also the distinct possibility that the engine is just old and tired. And I really don't want to face that possibility right now because, uh, well, I basically can't afford another engine. So, uh, if it comes to that, uh, I uh, really am not sure what I'm going to do. I mean, obviously, the uh, correct thing to do would be to test. Uh, would be to test the high pressure sensor. The problem with that is the uh, the tool to test it costs over two hundred dollars. I checked online; I think it was two twenty-five. So uh, it's far cheaper just to throw you know a brand new sensor in there because the sensor itself is what three dollars, uh, which of course isn't definitive. I mean, I could uh, always get a second one that's bad, but uh, you know, hopefully it's just one of these parts or the filter 
and hopefully it's just something simple because other than that the van was you know running and driving fantastic um, no uh, funny noises it uh, now that it's been on the highway and kind of cleared itself out uh, it's got all its power back I was very happy with the way it ran and the other thing I was going to tell you about uh, the oil pressure light was the second of two prob uh, second of two symptoms, which I don't think are related. Uh, on the way, on the outbound trip last night, uh, I looked in the mirror and I did see some uh, smoke behind me. I it was really it was kind of bright out, hard to tell exactly what color it was, and I'm figuring that was actually just the engine blowing some gunk out of the fuel system and burning it up. And th I figure that because uh, pretty much every time I let the van sit for a long time and then drive it, you know, it, I have a lot of hesitation. Then eventually, you know, I blow out whatever is gunking up the fuel system and uh, I get a cloud of smoke like that. Uh, once again, it's, it's momentary. Uh, we're talking uh, lasting a second or two, if even, and you kind of have to know what to look for. So I think if uh, it were an oil... Uh, like an internal engine problem with a lot of burning oil, it would have kept doing it. But after that happened, I, you know, I drove another, you know, 70, 80 miles last night, and uh, the, that problem didn't did not repeat. So I don't think the two are related, but I do have to at least concede the possibility. So I've got new parts in the way. There's really not much I can do tonight. I don't want to start it up. So. Uh, So tomorrow I might uh, take a better look at the uh, wire here and see what's up with that. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, fix this and hopefully it's something simple because uh, I'm really just not prepared for this to be a bigger problem. Uh, I mean, I've had the van eight years now. I've taken very good care of it. Always kept up on the maintenance and... Uh, and I just don't have the budget for a big repair. So thanks for listening to me. And of course, I'll uh, uh, do more video update as things progress. Well, I just wanted to mention uh, a couple more things uh, before I completely shut this off here. So uh, first off, first and foremost, I uh, did check the oil and it is still full. I haven't lost anything since the oil change and it's holding its oil now so the uh, pressure light didn't get kicked on because uh, of a lack of oil and you know lack of oil pressure due to that so one thing I just did was if you see this connector right here on the driver's side of the engine this is the connector for the oil uh, pressure sender wires now just tracing this here the um, Looks like the yellow one here, I believe, is for the uh, high pressure and the blue one for the low pressure. Uh, don't quote me on that, but what I did was I just, uh, I just disconnected that and then started the van. And the low pressure uh, light didn't activate. Maybe it, uh, uh, you know, maybe during warm-up it doesn't so much look at that, but... Uh, when I kicked up uh, the RPMs a bit, the uh, the flasher and the buzzer came back on. So uh, once again, uh, didn't have it going for more than you know a second or two. So I came back here with the engine running. I plugged the wires back in, and the uh, light and the buzzer went right out. So I know at least I'm getting some sort of a signal from uh, from the uh, sensor down here, putting night. Uh, night shot back on so uh, it's possible I'm getting some kind of a false reading but um, another possibility is like I said I had the had that connector apart and it was all it was kind of corroded in there so uh, might be a finicky uh, connector but then again I'm thinking that the oil pressure uh, sender there I mean it's a switch it's either on or off uh, it's not I mean, it doesn't read in degrees, so uh, 
so it's possible that the sen sensor itself is finicky and it's not reading correct, but uh, it's definitely on my list of things to replace, and obviously I'm going to have to pull the belts here again. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, uh, replace that uh, sender, you know, without uh, dropping the, uh, the muffler and uh, the heat shield here again, because that was a real pain. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to clean all this up here. And uh, I may also just run a new length of wire, and we'll see what happens from there. Oh, and one more thing. I noticed right here that the, uh, the oil breather tower, I did put a new seal on the bottom of it, and, but I cleaned it up, and you can see there's a... Uh, there's definitely a film of oil on it, so I am now wondering if maybe a cracked oil breather tower here can uh, um, can mess with the pressure reading. I'm not entirely certain how that works, but I'm certainly going to inquire online, so uh, thanks for listening to me ramble. I, this is not, this is obviously not a DIY video, I'm just, you know, working some diagnostics here and um, and another thing I wanted to cover, the last thing I swear, uh, is actually testing the oil pressure itself on the engine. Now, in order to do that, I would need an oil pressure gauge, and uh, obviously I don't have that. So, uh, if I, you know, if you know, after replacing the the filter, running new wire, and replacing the sensor, if that actually uh, doesn't clear this problem up and uh, then what I'm going to do is get an oil pressure gauge and um, see what I'm actually getting there for pressure so uh, but that obviously that'll have to be plumbed in uh, requires some modification here to do it so uh, I'm not anxious to take that on but I'm going to replace these things, uh, take it out for another highway test drive, very carefully, of course, because there's really not much other way to do it. I mean, this uh, it has to really be up to operating temperature uh, to uh, get a correct diagnosis on it. So wish me luck, and I will uh, update you when I know more.